Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Welcome back to Las Vegas. We're here at EMC World 2015. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon, and you are watching SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from EMC World 2015. Really excited to have with me for this uh, segment, Kevin Roche, who's the president of EMC Customer Service. Kevin, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Stu, I appreciate it. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, thank you, thanks so much. So, uh, you know, boy, we, we've had a lot going on on the show. Uh, I remember last year, one of the big themes that we talked about was transformation. And, and I think from the, you know, customer service organization, you've seen a lot of that. Give us the update, you know, what, what's top of mind for your group? You know, what, what are you helping to transform and move uh, your organization? Sure, this, so there's a couple of things, right? I'm really excited about, and I apologize, I'm losing my voice a little bit, so. <laughs> it's, it's Vegas, bit, we it's understand. It's been a busy week. Um, there's a couple of things that have been going on, right? From a customer services standpoint, we've been really starting to leverage the data and information that we've had and driving a more predictive, proactive solution support model, and that's really where we're going within customer service. But if you take it up a level, and we look at what we're doing with total customer experience, so the true end-to-end -end experience that our customers have, we're really excited about some of the things that are going on there, and the leveraging of big data to provide that analytics in a closed loop process with our customers, we're just seeing some really interesting things with that. Yeah, so, so Kevin, uh, I think EMC is really well known for the total customer experience. You know, we've had Frank Halk on the program exactly. talked about it, what VCE has done. The question I have for you following up on that is, it's tough in some of these new models. We're going from, uh, I talked to Vic Bagat, yes, uh, on Monday, the CIO of EMC, and he said, you know, those 24 month, $10 million projects don't happen this month. Exactly. I need shorter, quicker ones, and I have to imagine that that has an impact on services. Do you change some of the service levels there, or does everybody get, you know, the full EMC experience? It's interesting, you know, what we see an evolving model, right? We see our customers now, instead of calling about a point product in, uh, question, they're talking about a solution. I have a challenge or a problem, and then how can you help me? So we're really seeing a change in dynamics on how we're interacting, and therefore the solutions that we have to bring to that are going to be a little bit different. And um, you know, a big part of that is, if you wait for the issue to happen, we're going to be challenged. And so what we've been trying to do is get ahead of the issue and be more proactive and predictive. And we're leveraging the data, big data and big data analytics that we've been driving with Vic's team to be able to get in front of those issues with our customers, and we've had great reception from our top customers on that. Yeah, so I'm wondering if you could help unpack that big data piece sure. a little bit for us. Uh, lots of people don't really understand the federation model, and, and, I, and I know that the, the, the solution that you have spans outside of EMC, working with VMware and Pivotal. We're going to be digging in with a lot of that solution group today. Right. You know, how does that work? How do you all put the solution together? How does the support piece work? Can, can, can you explain sure. how that happens? Sure, we'll take it a couple of different dimensions, yeah. right? So first, the part partnership starts with Vic Bagat, as we mentioned earlier, and our CIO. We have a partnership from a business standpoint and with the IT infrastructure team to build out our big data platform. That big data platform is being leveraged across the entire EMC portfolio. So we're not just looking at service data, we're looking at sales information, we're looking at install base information, and we're driving that into one place where we begin to leverage data in the experience with our customers. So the first step in that partnership is our internal IT team using the whole federation and bringing a big data a platform for us to be in the leverage. The second part of that is the business, once you have that big data platform, is beginning to realize silos of information is not as effective as having a holistic view of that data and being able to report a total customer experience and that part has been really exciting. And then the third part of that is once you get information that becomes valuable for our customers, how do we begin to leverage and use that across the federation in the support model? And we've been working closely with VMware and Pivotal on bringing an end-to-end -end solution as it relates to our customers. All right, so the other, you know, one of the many you know, trends that's really transforming our industry is cloud. Uh, I, I like what I heard from you, kind of the eating our own dog food on right. that. How, how's cloud impacting what you're doing? So, you know, cloud becomes a solution solution drives a different type of behavior and information that we have to go drive towards. Once you start talking about cloud and big data and trust, you really start talking about those things as solutions. The bringing together of services and products and technologies, not only from your company, but across the federation and our provider ecosystem. And so for us, when we talk about cloud and what's happening, it's really driving 
an interaction that's different than what we've traditionally done. And so we've been looking at ways where we can bring a solution-oriented um, approach with our customers. We're really kind of driving an experience where we say, we, we don't understand completely the issue, but we're going to bring the right talent and skills to that demand and make sure that we have the right people aligned. And that's a matter of knowing the people, knowing the skills, the demand structure, et cetera, coming in and bringing that together in a seamless experience. Yeah, so we've had so many changes going on in the industry. I wonder as these change goes on, how you measure what's happening, because you know, if I'm installing a storage array, I know how long it takes, I know how many hours it right. did, I can get, you know, call up and you know, take care of things. As I build solutions and I do cloud, I'm having a lot more smaller touch points, so how do you measure kind of the voice of the customer and what's happening there? Yeah, we, we really, about two years ago, we really embarked on a, on a focus program around voice of customer, voice of partner, voice of field, and then the quality metrics around the experience our customers have. We didn't believe one place was the only place that we wanted to get data, and so we've leveraged that information, put it into our big data warehouse, and started to look at different trends from what our customers are sharing, what our field leaders are saying, what we're hearing from our partners, and what we're looking at from a quality data standpoint. Not just product quality, but the experience of that service experience that's going on, and we're excited about what that's bringing together. That's translating into improvements in our customer satisfaction experience, the net promoter and our loyalty scores, et cetera. We're seeing something change, and we're seeing the progress that we're making because we've been able to leverage that big data in bringing a solution-oriented approach to what our customers are looking for. All right, so how, how do you know whether the investments you're making are working? Yeah, it's, you know, the, the big part about this is, first of all, you have to listen to your customers, and that, that happens in a number of different listening posts that we have out there, right? So voice of customer, we're looking at our loyalty data that's coming back once a quarter, and we're looking and listening to what our customers are saying there. We're looking at what's coming out of our CSAT results, and we're saying, what's our, what's our results from that? We're looking at it from a quality, and a DU, DL, and a metrics that, that you traditionally think about from a technology standpoint. We're starting to put that together and looking at what those results are. So let's start from the customer. Our CSAT numbers from across the globe and our different theaters are at industry levels right now that are best in class. And those are not just what we report, but also what we're hearing in the industry. And we're getting recognized by some great industry um, pundits who are talking about the innovation we're bringing to that, et cetera. And so we're excited about what that's doing and our service levels, our customer satisfaction service levels have never been higher for us. In addition, we said we wanted to take a look at the whole loyalty experience and what our customers are seeing from an end-to-end -end standpoint. How we're doing in the sales cycle, how they're deploying our technology, how they're consuming and servicing it. And we're seeing our loyalty results just off the charts moving in the right direction. We decided um, last year to look at the Temkin report as a way to start to say, let's take an industry view of loyalty, and we were very proud last year, VMware and EMC, top three of 60 technology vendors out in the industry in delivering a net promoter score, a loyalty score of 43 or greater, and we're just really excited about those as proof points, not because we think it's the right proof point, but because the customers and the industry people are saying, hey, we're moving in the right direction. All right, well, congratulations on that, Kevin. Thank you, so, appreciate it. You know, this is a user conference. 14,000 people here. What I always loved about EMC World is get to talk to those practitioners, talk to what they're doing. They usually give some pretty honest feedback. How's the week been going for you? What, what, what's kind of the, the top of mind issues for them? You know, what are they saying you're doing great? And you know, what areas uh, are they hoping that you help them along that journey? Yeah, it's, I, I'll give you a great example. We had a, we had a super meeting, breakfast meeting earlier this week um, with one of our large global customers, and I, I think the. The summary was, a, was best stated by our customer. Hey, we like what you're doing. We like your technology. And we like the service experience that we have. But here's some of the things that we need help with. You can't think about just as your product. We actually need you to start to help us to give visibility when we look at our integrated data center solution, which might not have all EMC technology. How can you help diagnose and point in areas where you can see other people's um, issues or challenges and give us some assistance in helping in the problem resolution. And I think that's one of the things us and other technology vendors have to go up and do. How do we begin to bring that experience um, more seamless and holistically considering the complexity that's in the data center of our customers? And I think that's one of the things that's really driving us. Yeah, uh, you know, it, uh, we talk a lot about you know, what this new digital era is going to do 
uh, to, to how users consume technology. Uh, we're in many ways trying to help automate things and, and take away some of those challenges that they have. How, how do you see the role of you know, you know, your organization evolving over time? I mean, you, you know, we know orchestration is not going to take people out of it completely, but you know, how much is that push going to come? Yeah, it's really interesting. So some of this data that we've been talking about in the big data lake experience, that is being um, positioned with our customers to help give them visibility into their environment to become more proactive. Part of that information is, that same information is being used to be leveraged to drive back into our product groups. And we're sharing with our product groups what we're seeing from a customer experience so we begin to build that into the product right up front. So what I call those exability features that are really critical that reduces the touch points. And, and as I've said uh, within our company, you know, rapid and successful implementation and deployment of EMC technology. That's what's really driving us. We want to get value to our customers as quickly as we possibly can. And so that data is helping that experience and driving that, that piece of it. So, you know, a lot of great things are happening down that path. We're pretty excited about that piece of yeah, it. Yeah, it's interesting. We, what we've been talking at Wikibon about, especially in the big data space, is while the initial opportunities are very much services led, we think that software is going to be the big winner here. I mean, you know, yes, exactly. we've been all saying for many years software is eating the world, but you know, it, it's really going to be that marginal economics of software Absolutely. are really going to overtake what services do. Services are scalable. If I knew every customer I need to touch them, what do you think at an industry level, you know, what does that mean? And from EMC's standpoint, I mean, you don't have 100,000 services people doing professional services, exactly. so how do, how do you feel EMC's position and what, what's your commentary on the industry? In yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know, so we have, first of all, a great number of our, our super fantastic partners out there, right? So when I think about services and, and both professional and customer services, if we only think about that as um, EMC badged as the only way to solve, quite frankly, we're going to be in a, in a world of hurt. So the most important thing I think a technology vendor, whether that's software related or hardware related, is to begin to share openly our knowledge, our experience, and our insights into what products are happening. So we, we're making a big bet on knowledge and making knowledge available to our customers and our partners in a proactive way to help them in the resolution of that. And we think that's going to be really important, particularly in the evolution of software becoming a critical part of their, their stack. So, we see that as a critical piece of it. In exposing more data in a way that allows you to look at it from a mobile standpoint, your desktop, et cetera. So those are the key things that we have to do over the next you know, 12 to 15 months. Yeah, so I mean, you bring up a great point. You know, education services, we've talked to the EMC group on that. You've got certification for cloud, certification for big data. What, what, what's the update on how you're helping kind of train the industry on what's going on? Well, you know, I mentioned earlier about the use of big data in providing those proactive visibility into our customer's environment. What we also see in that is not only sharing with them the health of their environment or potential risks in their environment, we want to start to share with them ways to reduce and mitigate that risk. One way to do that is we believe education and getting their teams trained not only in the technology, but around these integrated solutions becomes key to our success as a partnership between our customers and what EMC brings to the business. And so Ed Services is going to be a really critical part of that equation. Yeah, um, there's been a lot of discussion here at the show about just some of the transitions that are going on, and EMC wants to make sure not to over-pivot too far. Mm -hmm. I mean, Platform 3 is great, but you know the NoSQL space is you know pretty small compared to what's there. Hadoop is phenomenal, but you know it, it's not like Microsoft Exchange is out there. Um, you know, how, how do you manage some of that in the field? Yeah, it's really, a th this is a critical balance that's going on right now today. The things that EMC has done to historically really well around our deep knowledge around our technology, you can't let go of that. You still have to build that, you have to nurture that, and you still have to have those skills. But what we feel is going to be really important is to look at the solutions, like an OpenStack, like Hadoop, that says, I have a problem that's solutions oriented. I want to bring in the deep technical understanding that I have within our teams and bring that to swarm, intelligence swarm, the solutions on that. So we really believe the balance is, as I've said to a number of my team members across the globe, it's great and we want you to continue to have that deep technical knowledge about a product or a product family. But we also want to start having you look sideways. We want you to see how that deep technology integrates with other pieces because we think ultimately that's the experience our customers are looking for. Yeah, so uh, 
Talk to me a little bit about the people, because uh, there's got to be some new hiring going on for that new skill set. Uh, EMC's also done acquisitions in the past to pull on teams to do that. If I remember right, even Chad Sackage came in through a small he iSCSI did. solution provider. Exactly. I worked with them in the early days on that. So, you know, how, how do you get that new skill set? Yes, oh, part of that's coming in through acquisitions, which is really great. I'll tell you the one thing that I've been extremely impressed. This is my fifth year now at EMC. I've been extremely impressed with the investment we make at what we call our, our GSAP program. We're bringing in associate people into the company that are thinking differently on how you solve problems, that are bringing in skill sets that quite frankly are driving us to different types of solutions and approaches to solutions, which is really amazing. So we are looking at the investment in entry level folks with a GSAP skill set that, that come and approach a problem totally different than the historical way of doing that, and we're really excited about what that can bring. So our investment is continue to leverage the deep technical knowledge we have of our team and begin to introduce through acquisitions and GSAP into making that happen. And the one thing that we have done really well, all of those acquired companies now have one global customer service experience. It all comes from one place, and one expectations our customers should have, and I think that's a real value that we should be uh, all leveraging. Right. So I'm, I'm curious, if, if you look at the consumer side of the market, social media plays a real important part as to how we communicate with there. I, I know kind of the B2B piece that EMC does, but for, from your part of the organization, you know, how much is there interaction? I mean, are people complaining about you know, some deployment and that escalating things? Or? Yeah, we hear some of that and that should be out there. And it's a great source of feedback. As I mentioned earlier, um, our total customer experience program that when we look at the holistic view, it's going to be really important for us to make sure that social and the social media points, we get information from that to help drive our experience. And so social media, is social and social um, feedback is going to be a critical part because it provides what I'll call that agile field feedback, the, the need to move quickly based on experiences that our customers and our partners are having. And I think that's going to be a critical piece of it for us. All right, so Kevin, I want to give you the last word. You know, EMC World 2015, what do you want your customers walking away from the show thinking about EMC? Well, the first thing I want to say is thank you because the, the whole process really starts with a partnership and, and whether it's the great days and everything's working fine or those days when things don't go right. The partnership that we have and the, and the times that I'm involved with escalations, I really appreciate their professionalism and support through the entire process. So the first statement is thank you. The second is we are committed to continuously improve what we do for you. Um, we have, a, I think, an engine of continuous improvement. We're not going to get it right on day one, but we believe that that has to be ingrained in what we do. And the third piece is we're heading to a predictive, proactive solution support model. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. We, we understand most of this time should be with it's your customers, your partners. We're going to have a lot of them here on the program throughout the rest of the day. Check out siliconangle.tv. All the videos will be up on demand. Check out wikibon.com for our research, and we will be right back with lots more coverage right after this quick break.